Torsten Holman hails from Germany and an upbringing that produced a regimented, demanding march toward excellence, leading to a surprising 2003 victory in the WPA World Championship. Johnny Archer's career has grown from his roots in Georgia, a simple, basic approach to life and pool that showcases a craftsman's brilliant gift, an approach that made him seven-time Player of the Year and Player of the Decade in the 90s. Today, these two champions' paths have led them to the same stage, where one will claim another major victory. It's the final of the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada and the Riviera Hotel and Casino for the finals of the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship presented by Pooldog.com. Hello everybody, welcome to Las Vegas. As always, thrilled to be here. It's a major championship. The excitement is in the air. Mitch Lawrence, along with my partner in the booth, Mark Wilson. And we have talked about these two. During the course of the week, they've both shown that they belong here. I said in the tease, different backgrounds, Mark, but there is one thing both of them want right now, and it is the title of champion of the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship. Well, Johnny Archer, at one time or another, has won every major title there is. He naturally has a well-rounded game that starts with a great break shot. Torsten Holman, on the other hand, has unflinching focus, and that gives him a great chance to win this title. And so as our two players get ready for this final matchup to see who wins the title, let's take a look at how they got here. Our first semifinal, Mika Immonen and Andreas Roszkowski of Germany. Mika prevailing in that one. And then he met Torsten Holman, and Torsten came out on top. Here he is, facing Johnny Archer, Johnny undefeated through the week. And Mark Wilson in this field of the best players in the world to go undefeated through that field is quite an achievement already. You're looking at the trophy that one of these two players will own. And the money, as we keep saying, the money is nice, that'll be spent. But that thing right there is what you play for. But I could not be more excited, Mitch, for two reasons. Number one, it's always an honor to be sitting here next to you, the voice of pool. And number two, I just love to watch world-class nine ball. Well, that first one took me by surprise. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. And I am so with you on the second one. We, we absolutely, we were talking about this a little bit before, about if both of these players play up to capability, what an incredibly exciting match this could be. So we'll see if they can do that. And a good opening break by Torsten. Three balls on the break and a shot on the one. That's a, that's a dream start. Holman, probably uh, the younger of the two players and just a little bit less experienced in these final matches, these big matches, but he's got that fierce, intense, burning focus, and that was really prevalent yesterday. He's going to need everything to hang with the uh, more mature and experienced Johnny Archer in this match. Torsten, 25 years of age, originally from Fulda in Germany, near Cologne, now living in Jacksonville, Florida. Johnny Archer, 36 been in Georgia most all of his life. Kind of a tricky transfer now from the two ball to the five ball. We're looking at a three rail position. This would be high right hand English and about 20 feet of travel on the cue ball. He's hit it a little bit short. Overcut the pocket just a smidgen and that's what brought that ball in short. The ball deflected a little bit more than he thought. As he looks at this, let's quickly give you the rules of this championship matchup. It'll be a race to seven for the title here in Las Vegas. Alternating break, 30-second shot clock, and one extension per rack for the players, and cue ball fouls only. And the 30-second shot clock will come into play. have seen it before. He would have to use the bridge and try to spin this ball in. This would require left-hand side spin. Dangerous shot has the possibility of scratching down in the corner if he catches the ball just a little bit too thinly. Perfect technique there with the elbow out to the side. He's really in here. Look at that. Sliced as thin as a great deli sandwich. 
And that's a big time shot for Torsten Holman, Mark. Right off the bat in the first rack, you're saying to Johnny, for one thing, I am unafraid here. I'm going to hit a shot I need to hit, even though it's tough. That was aggressive pool. Not looking to play a safety, but going all out to go ahead and win this first rack. You talked about the level of his play against Mika Eminen in the semifinal leading up to this, and both of them played good opening racks in that match, but Torsten Holman absolutely separated himself about halfway through it with what you talked about, his focus and his concentration. This is exactly what he wanted to say to Johnny Archer. I'm going to break, and I'm going to run out. I'm jumping on the board first. I am here to play for the championship. Torsten Holman up by a rack in Las Vegas. Let's take advantage of this time to thank some of our great official products of the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship. There you see Master Chalk, provided by Tweet and Fiber. Here a look, the Sardo M3000 tight rack, perfect rack every time. There you are, Super Aramid Pro Balls, provided by Imperial International. Thanks to all of them. Here in Las Vegas at the Riviera Hotel and Casino, we want to mention this great playing equipment that's being used for the finals of the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship. Beautiful Biltmore table by Connolly. Brunswick Centennial Cloth. There you see it on that table. Super Aramith Pro Balls provided by Imperial International and the Sardo Tight Rack. We thank all of them for their support of what is definitely a major event on tour, one that players come from all around the world to participate in. 128 of the best men and women. Big break by Johnny Archer, and let's see if he's rewarded with position. Gets a shot on the one, Mark. Well, pretty tough shot. I don't know if, it, if he can cut thin enough to go back into the side pocket. Scare me to death. Doesn't right? look like he can <laughs> shoot it into the corner pocket without scratching. This is one of those predicaments. The cue ball would have to go off very hot if he was to try to cut it into the side and the control of the cue ball would just have to be random. May have to play a safety shot. Well, he's looking at the cut, so the cut is available. Yeah, see, he looked at it there and kind of thought, well... Mm. Extension. Yeah, this is definitely the time to use your extension. Don't want to get behind in the match, making a hasty decision on the probably the toughest shot of this rack. Johnny already with one victory in this event, double elimination format over Torsten Homan, and it was a, a very well fought battle by Johnny Archer. Torsten never really in that match. It was 11 to 6. Good come cut on. there, but <laughs> Johnny going, come on. Great shot, no reward. He was elevated over the five ball, made that shot play even more difficult. Well, we're looking at a kick shot now. Trying to evaluate what the best way to make a kick safety is. I'd like to arrange the ball so that the two ball ends up on the opposite end of the table and hold the cue ball down here by the five. He's going to try to pinch in behind it with a little bit of low left. Stop the cue ball. Hit the eight. Trickled out. You saw Johnny there. He knew kind of what was going on. Wanted it to just somehow get stopped by that eight ball near the corner pocket. Holman now comes to the table with another great opportunity. A sort of a little command in the lead here. Two games to nothing if he can run out. We talked about both these players being okay with the idea of playing on, the, on such a big stage here. Major championship final, Torsten Holman. Of course, 2003, nobody really expected him, and he just came and took that world title. But since then, when people know you're capable of it, Mark, you don't sneak up on anybody anymore. It just makes it that much tougher. And the expectation levels uh, substantially ramped up. Big draw stroke. That's great. <laughs> Torsten told me, I was talking to him about the world title and what happened afterwards, and he, he told me that 80% of the events that he was invited to and has played in sits, since the world championship in 2003, that he's finished in the top five. And that's on a world scale against the best players. So this is somebody whose time has really come. He is. He's fully capable of taking this title. 
Oh, absolutely. If Johnny has anything, anything that's a, a strong point for him is that his maturity and his creativity. Creativity is spawned from confidence, and you have to be here for a while before you feel comfortable enough to go ahead and try things you're not certain of the outcome with. This is what he was doing against Mika Imanen when he finished his semifinal match with him, and he is carrying this over now against Johnny Archer. Holman is such a humble guy. Always when you hear him speak of his own game, he talks about its weaknesses, not his strengths, and this is a world champion. And that's big. That second rack is very, very big now for Torsten Holman. He jumps out to a two-rack lead as the break in rack number three, right where he wants to be in Las Vegas. When you talk about great players from around the world who have played well in major championships and own those titles, this is definitely a name that comes up. Torsten Holman's countryman, Ralph Suquet, here supporting his friend and fellow world traveler. And truly, Mark, one of the great guys in the game. Fun to be around, very dedicated, true professional. Whenever you think of Germans, you always think of precision, whether it be manufacturing or, as example here in their sport, both these guys train so hard and diligently. That's why you always see their names at the top of the list. And, you know, when you talk to them, they talk often about the friendships that are forged on the international traveling circuit. And you can really feel it. They compete often and hard. As a matter of fact, Torsten Holman took care of Ralph Suquet once in this tournament, beat him 11-8. But they have such respect for each other. It's clear when you're around them. It's great to watch those friendships. Big time break there by Torsten Holman. Let's see what happens. That eight went in. Had the cue ball stopped near the center, but got kissed down table. He's been breaking really well. Yeah, he's going to evaluate the layout of the table. That's a predicament. Sometimes you just have to be a shot maker. Nothing lays easy. But the, when the safety is as is, is difficult as the offensive shot, you should generally choose or favor the offensive shot. Extension. Takes his extension. Torsten started playing when he was 12 years old in Germany with his father. Told me that the first day he went to play, he met his teacher, who still teaches him, Michael Wall. Mark, you being a teacher that you are and working with students all the time, you know what it means to have somebody that you trust to help you with your game. Well, he possesses super technique. You can witness that. You see Johnny trying to get a look from behind. Shot that, was just, that was just... Uh, you know what? So far, we're only in rack three, but we've seen pretty much every shot so far from Torsten Holman. Strong, powerful strokes that kind of delicate touch Johnny sat back in his chair and I guarantee you he knows he's in for a final match here you know home in the straight pool background and that's a game that's kind of past its time but what that offers is the shots are not numbered for you you have to think your decision out beforehand then bend over and execute and I think that really transfers some skills over here that sometimes people that play exclusively nine ball do not possess and it's interesting because Torsten just won the European Straight Pool Championship. And when you talk to him about it, he says, it's my favorite game. I love straight pool. And he's, for one, he's upset that it's not, you know, kind of given the respect that he thinks it's due. Well, he has an excess of a 400-ball high run. There's very few people on the planet ever <laughs> that have accomplished a 400-ball run. When he talks to you about it, he gets, you can see the pride kind of, swell up in him it's neat to see somebody his his story is so interesting he was in the german army for five years played in the sports division of the army although he did regular army work too but he played a lot of pool got very proficient at it decided to go out and try to play and was not making a whole lot of money and was about to give up the game literally told me i was about to stop playing and in 2003 he went Won the WPA world title, $65,000 that went along with it, and, and said, well, I guess I got some money to keep playing. And he has taken full advantage ever since. And you're getting to see what happens when one player is staking his claim early in a race to seven to a championship that would mean so much to Torsten Holman. Johnny Archer 
Down by three now in Las Vegas. Now it's time to take a look at some of our other top finishers here in Las Vegas, brought to you by Brunswick Centennial Cloth, and you see the true international nature of the game. Terrific week for Germany's Andreas Roszkowski, for Suter of Ohio, and Marlon Manalo of the Philippines, Troy Frank of America, and Satoshi Kawabata of Japan. Congratulations to all of them. A very, very relaxed-looking Torsten Holman. You see the score, 3-0 in a race to 7 over Johnny Archer. The Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship presented by Pooldog.com. We're at the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Mitch Lawrence and Mark Wilson. And Johnny Archer has his work cut out for him. He's now in a hole, 3-0 to Torsten Holman, and he's really only played a couple of shots, Mark. Hasn't done anything really majorly wrong. He made one good shot, wasn't rewarded with position, made a kick shot that just let the object ball trickle out there, and that's been the and Look at this. Look at that. You want to talk about some luck or lack of it? Wow. Yeah, that's a very unfortunate occurrence, and that's the last thing that Johnny needed to this juncture of the match. Let us take another look. Keep your eye on that cue ball. Looks like it's going to stop there, Mark, and watch the two. Oh. Devastation. Oh. Now, a player of Holman's uh, capability is out in excess of 90% of the time with ball in hand, and the ball's being distributed about the table like this. And if you were Johnny, you'd be sitting there shaking your head, too. There is just This is one of those times where you have to be really patient if you're Johnny Archer, because like we said, you haven't Special. done anything too badly. It's just you're in a deep hole, and, and you got to wait for your chance to get back. You got to hope for an opportunity, yep. and which may or may not come. But you certainly have to be mentally prepared. And there's no sense beating yourself up over something that you have nothing, uh, no control over. There's every possibility it's going to be at least 4-0 before he gets his first chance. And not only that, but making three balls on the break to help your opponent out when he gets ball in hand too. You don't get to be a world champion like Johnny Archer without being real positive through the adversity. And you never win one of these major events without having to make some miracle comeback or something dynamic to happen. Well, you know what? Johnny's road, even though he went undefeated through a very tough field, started off very in a very difficult manner, winning 11-10 over Corey Harper. And the thing about Johnny, we've talked about it, you and I, before. So look at this play by Torsten. Combination Four, shot. Nine, yep. Get back to Johnny in a second. This is going to be another in a series of big shots for Torsten Holman as he goes for the bridge. Boy, it is. You can hear a pin drop out there. There's hundreds of fans, but it is quiet and tense. Tricky combination shot, and then they add the bridge in there in terms of difficulty. Notice how he holds the bridge steady. Rim the pocket. Now there is a chance that Johnny Archie was waiting for. It is not an optimal chance, but he is at the table again. So no matter what happens here, he has some measure of being able to do something with the four still on the table and the nine, more importantly, still on the table. Two choices. Could be a cross-corner bank shot or it could be a straightaway safety. The cross-corner bank shot has some safety possibilities, but it's a pretty steep angle, which makes it fairly risky. Johnny goes for his extension right away. He knows he wants to take some time and measure this out. He's going to play a safety, I believe. And he's lining up the bank shot with that angle. Two-way shot. Making sure not to overcut the ball. Play it to the high side of the pocket, the proper way to play it. Bring the cue ball around for the five. You can see it there. If he were to make that shot, he's in good shape to keep that rack going. And if not, he's making it tough for Torsten Holman. These are the parts of the game where you think, well, it's just a safety shot. No, the quality of the execution required to make this is much more difficult than pocketing most of the balls that you see. Man. Try to bring the four ball back down to the center of the other end rail. No, he was playing the bank shot. Look at this. Oh, how are they rolling? And you see him put his hand up with Johnny because that's just player's way of kind of apologizing for a lucky roll there. Not something you mean to do. 
Kind of like when you get a net cord in tennis and just trickles over. Well, despite the fact that he's facing some adversity, that's the way it's going to be. We need to see a quality swing and a solid contact on the four ball. Johnny will talk. He'll tell you how he's feeling and what's going on. He's already taken his extension, so he's got to get down over it. And that is obviously one angry Johnny Archer. Oh, boy. Gee. Okay, Holman, ball in hand. Six ball looks to be a bit of a problem, but he's really enjoying the opportunity to reclaim this rack that he let slip away when he slightly missed a tough combination. Johnny, obviously very frustrated. You fight through, you fight through a tough field, you go undefeated, you wait for your chance to win the title, you're feeling pretty good about the way you're playing. And then, as often happens in sports, the unexpected. You don't get shots, the balls don't go your way. Torsten misses, leaves you totally hooked. And before you know it, your opponent has put together four consecutive racks to open the final. That is what Torsten Holman has done to Johnny Archer. And to add insult to injury in rack number five, Torsten has the break here in Las Vegas. And here is a young face, something that's very important to the Billiard Congress of America, especially through their Billiard Education Foundation, the charitable arm that's dedicated to developing future leaders through programs and scholarships. If you want to find out about that, get an application for... 2006 academic year go to bca-pool.com and this is a terrific terrific part of what the billiard congress of america is all about torsten homan now patiently and very very purposefully comes to the table up for nothing against johnny archer and johnny's got to be just fuming in his chair as I said, Mark, he's got to just stay patient. Torsten Holman is really putting the vice grip on it here. If he can make something happen in this rack, Johnny's in big trouble. Well, Johnny's outward display of emotion is not really the way he's feeling. He's been here before. He knows what he's got to do. He vented a little bit and expended some energy in such a way that to uh, alleviate any kind of stress that he may be feeling. He'll be fine if he just gets a shot. Torsten's doing everything he can not to let that happen. Nope. Break and run out in rack one and three. The balls are cooperating, Mitch. He's going to be able to play a stop shot on the one and have the proper angle to go from the two into the five. Or the maybe that's the, the four ball on the rail. Three, four over there. By the yeah, side that's, is there any trouble over there with the three, four in terms of, of what he's going to have to do with the three first? Well, he's got the perfect angle here. He's going to be able to punch this over and dislodge the four ball or let the cue ball trickle in between. Look at that speed. Nicely executed, but now he's faced with another predicament. In front of or behind the side pocket. If he chooses, it looks like he's going to have to go behind the side pocket, which means back here and across he's got to deal with this ball. Delicate shot. You know what? This is somebody who is just extremely confident right now. He is making tough shots look very routine. Even if they're not perfect, Mark, he's... You feel how solidly centered this player is right now. Well, and that was a perfect shot. It, that's the best you could hope for. Those two, oh, went through a nice series there. <laughs> this is just fun to watch, not for Johnny Archer, but for the rest of us. Anytime you get to watch a peak performer that is on top of a game that's this difficult under a pressure situation and the stage of actually worldwide TV, you are indeed watching the worldwide leader in sports. And Torsten Holman is making this look like he's just kind of out at the neighborhood pool room in Jacksonville, a place that he's loving right now. 
And I guarantee you, everybody in Jacksonville is liking what they're seeing. Their new neighbor is putting on a show here in Las Vegas. This is just one, one exhibition by Torsten Holman. He leads by five racks now. The Billiard Congress of America welcomed two extraordinary individuals into its Hall of Fame this year. Robin Bell Dotson in the Greatest Players category and Mike Massey for meritorious service. Robin was known for her steely determination and accurate shot making, which she used to claim 27 professional tournament titles. Among them, she's won two WPA World Nine Ball titles and was 1991's Player of the Year. She earned the nickname Bankroll for her ability to win the big money events. Mike is one of Poole's greatest goodwill ambassadors, as well as a world champion in billiard trick shot. He's traveled millions of miles, giving countless exhibitions to fans around the world, and in so doing, he's brought substantial visibility to the sport he loved. He's a four-time champion of ESPN's Trick Shot Magic, and recently was crowned the world trick shot champion in snooker. Please visit bca-pool.com for information about all the members of the Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame. Johnny Archer chalking up now. There you see the Biltmore table by Connolly. Beautiful table. Perfect test for the best players in the world. And Johnny Archer now just has to focus on one ball at a time. Down 5-0 in a race to 7. We did not expect this. Both players capable fully of just putting racks together. Johnny has just been so dominant this week, going undefeated. He has not really had a chance to get going. And you see him there, even it, just his whole body language is going, look again, look at this right here. Well, he missed the cue ball just a little bit. He had a little top spin on there. We saw that in the early, one of the early breaks that he had. Didn't absolutely sell out here, however. Right now, Holman, you know, his accurate, aggressive pool has been rewarded by the pool gods with some good fortune to go along with it. The one in the three ball down here is a problem. May have to push out. Push. Pushing. We'll see whether Johnny Archer gives this back to Torsten Homan. Or likes to shoot it himself. Well, Johnny so badly wants to get to the table, I think Holman could have pushed behind the eight ball and Johnny would have <laughs> accepted it. He just wants to get up there and try to make something happen, stir him up. Well, he's passed it Give back. Give it back to him. This is the part of the push out that's interesting to me, really, that you put it in a place where, you know, you're hoping that if your opponent gives it back to you, you do have a play on it. So we'll see what Torsten had in mind when he pushed to this spot. That's a nice shot. It sure is. We've got distance and we've got a tough lead. We're just late to keep on the rail. This is not the dream start that Johnny was thinking of <laughs> when he came into the room today. Well, it's like I said, you just, you have such high expectations and you've been playing great and then you just got to be frustrated that you can't let it out. Part of the game. And this has been a truly legendary career for this man along the way. We haven't seen him get to play too much today, but it's always a thrill to watch Johnny play. Had to use a half mass A shot, get down there and make a solid contact in the one and attempt to get the separation. Three ball's a problem. It's a tough shot and then you're gonna have to elevate the cue over the three at close range and shoot a long way, a rolling ball type hit. Seems like for Torsten, and like we talked about before, it doesn't seem like too many of these shots have given him trouble, even if they're tough shots. I like the look on his face. It's always a real analytical look. He's detached from any uh, emotion and just chooses the best shot and then sets about executing it perfectly. Decides to come back defensively. Now you talk about execution. Right? There you, you go. Hardly set it up with your hands any better than that. Johnny you know, blocked, and, and the the rails uh, leading to the one ball are not very available. 
think we're gonna have to see him kick. Oop. Wrong view. Half mass A kick in behind. This is a kick safety. Oh boy. Seemed a bit hasty on. Not that even close well. there. I mean that was that was just like you said a quick shot, and this is kind of a resignation almost by Johnny Archer to me. Those balls are open now. And what was a tough play on the one earlier for Torsten Holman is now ball in hand on the one with a 5 nothing lead in a race to seven. Some players feed on emotion in any sport we have them. They play their best when they let their passion run wild and they get out there and they get the crowd into it. Torsten Holman, on the other hand, see where that cue ball stops. I'm going to say Torsten, a clear example of somebody who takes the emotion out of it pretty much. Mentally, Torsten, I think, saw a little weakness from Johnny there and maybe got a little overconfident. Yeah. Like, you are running a foot and a half too far. Anything was better than this. Now he has to really fight and make a tremendous shot. That was pretty big there, Mark, actually. Unless you can answer like that and come back and just <laughs> confidently cut it in and get shape on the three. Not I guess I can line. do that, you know. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, I said something to you, and I, and I can feel it. The room is different. Torsten has taken out of this equation the crowd supporting Johnny in any way right now. They're, they're behind him. They know the game. There's been 6,500 amateur pool players right next door here at the Riviera Hotel all week playing in the National 8-Ball Championships that's been put on by the Billiard Congress, and they know the game. They, I, I guarantee you they respect what Torsten's doing, but they also would like to see Johnny play, and he's taken them out of the game. It's been pretty amazing to watch. And they come into Johnny's backyard. Yeah. You know, this is a, an event that Johnny's had a great deal of success with over the years. Johnny, the 2000 BCA Open champion, beating George Sansusi that year. He knows what this title means. Homan doing to Archer just what Archer did to Homan last night, and that's just smothering. Pocket speed there. Just giving it enough to let it tumble in. This is a clinic right now by Torsten Homan. You know, as an athlete, you have got to feel pretty amazing when you're in a place like this. You know, we talk about the zone. Watch out. Of course, as I'm saying about being in the zone. <laughs> and there is a little bit of motion for the first time from Torsten Holman. Well, he knows he let uh, ideal, slip, uh, ideal position slip away. And he's in a predicament now. He may have to turn the table back over to Archer, try to play a good safety. Otherwise, this can be a super thin cut shot. As a safety, he's going to try to put the seven on the end rail behind the eight. Drag the cue ball down table. Mm. Obtain some distance. Well, good work there. I think Johnny can see it, Mark. Well, if he's going to cut it in, he's going to have to fan this thing ever so thin. Once again, he comes to the table with less than an ideal opportunity. Only oh, stitching when it comes. Calling it right away. It's a sign of an experienced player. Just says, let me get this out of the way. Ten, extension. This is pretty much just watching Johnny to see if he can in any way get back in this match. He's cutting this ball, and watch how still he keeps his head. He played the kick shot in behind. That now was, he's open for a roll somehow, some way. Shot. Well, he received uh, it. Yep. Time I put English, it just squirts off. He left it fairly challenging for Holman. Once again, the defensive shot is equal to the offensive shot in terms of difficulty. Thin cut. Wow. Wow. Oh, maximum of good work. There. 
and that was the right shot selection. Had the play offense from there, the safety was so challenging. Total efficiency right now for Torsten Holman. There's just no doubt about it. Who has been in control since early in this match. And that would be the player to reach the hill. And not only that, but putting the donut on Johnny Archer so far. 6-0 Torsten Holman over Johnny Archer. One rack away from the title. Still atmosphere inside the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're watching the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championship presented by PoolDog.com. And there is the reason it's kind of still. Everybody expected a very tight, tense matchup in the finals between two fantastic players. The legendary Johnny Archer and the newly up-and-coming former world champion Torsten Homan. And it has turned into a rout. Six-nothing now, one rack away from the title is Mr. Homan. And with the break, and there is every reason to believe, based on past experience in this match, Mark Wilson, that he will stay at the table after he hits this break shot. Watch out. Almost got kicked in. Well, the balls are cooperating nicely. When he gets close to having a bad roll, it turns out favorable. When Johnny ever had anything slightly go wrong, it always he had to pay the biggest price. Another runnable rack for home, and he's got a shot on the one, thin cut. Two ball lays nicely out in the middle of the table. Johnny uh, kind of appears as though he's resigned himself to the fact that he's just not going to get an opportunity. Johnny's done this often in his career to many players. It doesn't mean you enjoy being on the other end of it. Sometimes you know that just when it's, when it's somebody else's day, it's their day, and when it's your day, it's your day. There's, there's not the thing about nine ball, about any Q sport really, there isn't anything you can do when the other player's at the table, period. You can, you can want to be there all you want, but unless you get a chance, it's just not going to happen. What a great shot selection. Huh. Right in between the three and the eight to pick up the proper angle to carry the three to the five transfer. The last big hurdle in this rack. He needed to be on this side of that three ball. So the cue ball naturally comes over here and comes down table for the five. And you hear the crowd behind him. That ball was nowhere near coming down table, and somebody went perfect. This is just dialing it in now, Mark. This is just letting your talent take over, and, and I want the cue ball here, and then boom. All good angles. Makes life a lot easier. You know, you we're watching Torsten, and we talked earlier about his uh, European Straight Pool Championship victory. And when it's important to you, the reason he said it was important to him, the reason I think he's played so well this week, is because he came off a, a big-time tournament victory in a sport that mattered to him. And when you come off on a high like that and you have confidence in your game, there's pretty much nothing you can't do. Just grazed the eight ball. It still turned out just great. Very manageable. <laughs> I think, you know, if he wins this rack and then wins the title, I think he's just going to want to keep playing. He'll get anybody up here. Just to, When you're in this place, you just want to yeah. keep hitting balls. In this match, if Johnny had uh, feathered the eight ball with the cue ball, he would have scratched or got hooked. You know, instead, Homan comes out just beautiful, and that's just the way the balls are rolling. Two balls away now. You really have to admire Homan, though. He trains like a warrior, you know, and you earn your breaks. You don't just get them given to you. You have to be here in order to get a break. Well, we talked when he was playing Mickey Eminen about the, the dedication of world travel and the need to stay in shape mentally and physically. Kind of a new game here on the World Nine Ball scene. And Torsten Homan deserved this last nine ball. There is as much emotion as you will ever see out of this man. And he deserves to let it go, Mark. <laughs> he certainly does. What a great young man he is, too. Very polite, very pleasant, very conscientious about his role in uh, pushing the sport forward. And he knows what it means. You don't just have one world title now, Torsten. You got a second major under your belt in a couple of years. You have announced to the world that you mean business. Johnny Archer, a fantastic week for him. I know Melanie and Johnny Lee are still proud of him. We'll see him again. 
But as he packs it up, he knows that today, above all, it was Torsten Holman's day. And now it's time for our super shot of the match, brought to you by Q-Tech Hughes. And sometimes we get explosive shots, Mark Wilson, but this one demonstrates the capability and the precision of Torsten Holman's game, which just dissected Johnny Archer today. Well, this uh, shot, he played position to get a little bit straighter on the two. He had a tough angle, so now he has to play an intricate, uh, delicate position play, making the cue ball go between the eight and the nine ball and pick up the proper angle that allowed him to get to the five ball and break and run out to win the championship. You see Torsten kind of moving slowly there around, and he knew it when he hit it. And this is, again, as we take another look at it, an example of what this whole match was about. A confident Torsten Homan, very sure of himself. Did a number on Mika Imminent in the semifinal, and now Johnny Archer, 7-0 on his way to the title. As tournament director Steve Tipton alerts the crowd to the presentation of the trophies to our final two out of 64, there's Johnny Archer graciously accepting second place. Steve Dukoff, the executive director of the Billiard Congress of America, and David Tomazuka, president of Connolly Billiards, hands him the trophy. And Johnny's smiling because he knows there are some days you just cannot do anything about what your opponent is doing and today was not johnny's day as i said before he will indeed be back one of the great great players in the game but as it turns out it's a torsten holman who recently moved to jacksonville florida because he wanted to improve his game put on a show like we have not seen in a long time seven nothing over the player of the decade in the 90s he adds this trophy to his case, which has the 2003 WPA World Championship oh. trophy in it. And that is one happy, happy Torsten Homan as well. He should be. He's given us a lot of thrills all week. Congratulations to Johnny and to Torsten Homan and all of our great players who've been in Las Vegas this week. We're happy you've joined us. We know we'll see you again soon. For Mark Wilson, I'm Mitch Lawrence. So long, everybody, from Las Vegas. Accommodations at the Billiard Congress of America Open Nine Ball Championships have been provided by the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, celebrating their 50th anniversary. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.